Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be looking at some tips and tricks for Godot, and we'll also be checking out some of the new features coming in Godot version 4.2. Now, do note that I am running the 4.2 beta at the moment. So currently, if you're on a stable release, you won't be able to use some of these features. Now, the first really notable thing, which a lot of people are excited for, is the folder structure I actually got a bit of an upgrade. So the first thing that's really cool is you can change the color of your folders by simply Simply right clicking here we can go down to set folder color and we can change it to whatever color we want obviously now this is a kind of small one but I really like this feature you used to only be able to split the file explorer vertically like this but now if we click the button again, we can split it horizontally. This is actually very helpful since your folder structure is naturally in a vertical layout. So having it side by side with this little extension to your Explorer is actually very convenient. And I know a lot of people don't like having the more like Unity or Unreal style file explorer, but I think it's nice to have the combo here and it definitely speeds up my workflow a lot. Now moving on to a pretty cool shortcut. This one is going to save you a ton of time. Instead of searching through your folder structure to find the correct scene or asset you'd like to open, you can just type shift alt o and you can quick open any assets in your game. So I can search here for my script, which I'm about to show you guys and just open that right from there. And we won't have to do any searching for where it's located in the file explorer. Now, if you'd like, you can also use control shift O to quick open a scene. Otherwise you can use control alt O to quick open a script, but I typically just use shift alt O cause then I can search for the specific resource I want, whether it is a scene or a script, and it's a lot easier in my opinion. Now we also have another really cool feature here that I'll show in this script that I've opened. So I'm going to expand this a bit, but basically we can type in keywords for our comments here and it will highlight them with a specific color. I have all the default labels typed out here. So these will be really helpful if you have a note you want to leave in your code somewhere and you just want it to be really bright you can make it a specific color with these. Now, if you are using an external editor like VS Code, you can just install something like Better Comments, which is a plugin and it will do basically the same thing. Now, also, if you wanna change the color of the text, you can just go into the editor settings, go into your text editor inside of the theme, and all the way at the bottom, you'll have your list of words for each of the different colors. And then you can obviously just change the colors here if you'd like to do that. Now, another quick tip I've found really useful for speeding up my workflow is simply holding down Alt, and then you can click different parts of your code and it will just create another cursor. So let's say I wanted to add an extension to a few of these lines. I could just hold down Alt, add a few cursors around, and then anything I type will be added to each one of the cursors. So I guess I don't have an example pulled up on where you would use this, but I find myself using it a lot when I'm editing static arrays or just multiple similar lines at the same time but definitely make use of that. And while we're on the topic of text editor shortcuts, you can also use alt and arrow keys, and this will simply move a line. So let's say I wanted my to-do line at the top. Instead of selecting it, control X, control V, I could just hold alt and then click the up arrow and move the entire line, which is obviously an extremely useful shortcut. Now, another really cool shortcut, which I actually just learned about, is pressing F1 to open the documentation search. And typically, I would just go into my scripting tab here and then go to the search help. But ever since I found this, it's been extremely helpful for just accessing the documentation with a single click, and you should definitely be using this. Now, another quick thing, which might help. I'm going to open an example here. We're just going to make a new ready function. Now, a lot of times you'll want to print something to the output and typically you just use the print function. Let's say you were printing a few different variables. So I, you might do something like list your variable one here and then var two here. But the problem with this is when you print it out, they're going to be right next to each other. So I'm actually going to type up an example here. We're going to say var 
var1 equals, we're going to make it an int, set it equal to 10. var2 is a float, and we'll set this equal to 5.2. And now if I run the game, you can see that it printed 105.2, which is obviously not the correct output that we're looking for. Typically, I just do something like add a string with a bunch of spaces here to separate the two, or add some formatting logic. But there's actually a way easier method for actually achieving this, and it's called the print s function. Now print s will essentially do the same thing, but it will print each one of the arguments with a space in between it. So now when we run it, it's a bit easier to read that these are two separate variables. And you could even go a step further and use the print t function. And this will print any arguments with a tab in between them. So you can see down here, there's even a larger space in between the two values. Now on the same topic of debugging, maybe you're actually using this print function to check what the status of the variables are at this point in your code. There's actually a way easier way to do this and it's simply adding a breakpoint. Now a breakpoint, if you don't know, will essentially freeze your game at that specific line, and then you'll be able to read all of the data inside of your game at that specific frame or that point in time. So basically in our ready function, what we're going to do is add a breakpoint where the print line is, and this will tell Godot to freeze our game at this point, and it will not read this line, but instead will pause everything and give us a detailed look at all the properties and kind of the state of our game. So we're gonna add this breakpoint on the left here and we're gonna run this. And then you can see immediately on the ready function, we got a breakpoint in our debugger tab and it will say the exact script and the line which it's in. But mainly what we're looking at is we have our local variables here and we have var1 which is equal to 10 and var2 is 5.2. If you don't wanna allocate an entire line just to print the variables out and then look in the output function, I think this is definitely a lot easier. Even for simple debugging, you can obviously check the state of your game much quicker. And it's not like you have to restart the game because you can simply use this button on the right here or press F12 and Godot will simply continue the game as normal and basically unpause everything. Now, there's one more tip I wanted to mention. This one is a bit more complicated. So I have this script here and I'm going to be assigning it to my node in my scene tree here. So we're just gonna switch the script and I'll basically show you what it does first. So we have this export variable, which is our energy value, and this is set to zero by default. And then in the inspector panel, I'm gonna set the energy to negative one. It will throw an error on my node on the left here, and it'll say that the energy must be zero or greater. Now, this example is obviously copied straight from the documentation, but this is basically creating a warning from our script specifying exactly what we want to warn the user about. And it's obviously a very flexible system and very good for documentation for one, and also just keeping all of your assets clean when you're developing the game. So we're gonna reset this to zero and we're gonna check out how this script actually works. So the way that the script works is we have our export variable, which is our energy value, and this has a setter function attached to it. Now, if you don't know how setters and getters work, I do have a tutorial covering these and it'll just walk you through what they are and how to use them. So that should be in a card in the top right or something. But basically inside of here, we just call the update configuration warnings method. And when we call this, we can specify what we wanna update the warnings to with this function. So we're gonna override this get configuration warnings function and inside of here, all we have to do is return an array where each value of the array is just an item which will be a separate warning. So in here, we're just checking if the energy is smaller than zero, we're going to return this message and then otherwise we'll just return an empty array. And the last thing we wanna do is just make sure it is a tool script so that it can run in the editor. Otherwise you won't be able to get the live update for the warning inside of the editor. But once again, if we change this below zero, the setter that will detect that we changed the value and it will queue this get configuration warnings and simply add it to our node in the top left. That's all the tips I have for you guys today. If you have any other tips or tricks you'd like to share with the community, you can either leave them in the comments on the video or you could join our Discord server and suggest the tips there. These videos definitely help new Godot users a lot and I think it's good to share all the cool functionality of the engine with anybody who's either just getting started or doesn't know about some of these tricks. But that'll do it for this video, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.